It's time for the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Each week, Trading Stocks Made Easy demystifies stock trading and investing so you can profit big. And now, here's the host of Trading Stocks Made Easy, the wealthy investor, Tyrone Jackson. Well, hello there, everybody. It's Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor from thewealthyinvestor.net. So happy that we have a little time uh, to talk about Making Money on Your Money, which is the title of this week's episode. So, you know, I like to think of these episodes when I don't have my students on as guests as our personal time together where I can tutor you privately about the financial markets. Okay, so that means in most of the episodes that we're going to have going forward, I'm going to really challenge your consciousness, your belief system so that you can open up and attract more money and wealth to you quickly. You don't have to wait forever to begin a positive financial habits, right? So that's what the rest of this year is going to be about. Fasten your seatbelts because you're going to learn more from this show than you've learned in college and high school combined. Because I'm going to drop some bombs here about how the financial markets work. Use this to your advantage. Now, When we talk about making money on your money, that's really what business is all about. I'll give you a small example. If you and I open a pizza shop, right, we have to have some startup money, also known as startup capital. Maybe we'll need $50,000 to move into the space, get the oven, the walls painted, come up with a name, all the certificates and licenses required to do business in the state. And then finally, we can go find a supplier who will give us the ingredients so we can make pizza and soda. And then after we established our menu of pizza and soda, we're going to add things that are cheaper like pasta, for example. There's a huge markup on pasta. So we're going to take that $50,000 and make money on that money by opening a pizza shop. Now, if that pizza shop goes really well and we're able to make money on it consistently, we're going to go 10, 15 miles away and we're going to open another store and then another store, and then ultimately we're going to have a chain. Well, if we're smart entrepreneurially and not just stuck on one pizza shop, we set a goal and we say in five years we'll have five different stores in one particular region. Now we are a chain. But we want those stores to constantly be filled with people, right? So at some point, we're going to develop an advertising budget, radio, TV, Instagram, internet, to increase that business's visibility and to increase sales. So all business is about making money on your money. Or or you can take that same $50,000, open an online trading account, well, let's say TD Ameritrade, and begin trading stocks for profit, and you might even make more, a greater return, than opening a pizza shop. Why? You don't have all that equipment, the ingredients, those licenses, et cetera, et cetera. But our return on that money is what we're going to watch. Now, let's talk about return here. When you put up the $50,000, we're either seeking to make a 5, 10, 15, or 50% return. Yes, I'm going to do a little math in this episode. If we put up $50,000 and at the end of one year, we've made $100,000, well, we've doubled our money. But if we put up $50,000 and at the end of the year, we've earned $75,000 in gross sales, we made what? Well, we didn't make 100%. We made a lesser amount on our money. If I can turn the 50% in the stock market faster than I can in the pizza shop business, why would I open up a pizza shop? Because that's all people know. That pizza, that pizza shop is tangible. Everything that comes out of there is tangible, and that allows you to make a living. Well, you see, people who have a financial education know how to invest in the stock market to get the same return that you would get on a pizza shop or even higher. That's making money on your money. Now, all business is making money on your money. The only thing is, do you know how to do it? Were you taught how to run a business? Well, believe it or not, for some institutions like banks and insurance companies, their business is Wall Street. The slang term on Wall Street is running money, making money, make money. You got it? Okay, so you've been listening to the show for a while. You know how this goes. If you and I buy three or four hundred shares of, let's say, Apple stock 
a member of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, by the way, that pays a dividend, we feel pretty comfortable investing in that stock and then trading that stock for income using a strategy like covered calls. We'd be making money on our money, and that would be our business. Do you get it? So again, instead of opening a bricks and mortar pizza shop, we're going to take that same investment capital and we're going to put it to work in Wall Street. Now, what I love about making money on your money in Wall Street is the amount of employees you need to, let's say, trade and keep track of all trades, maybe one, maybe even a part-time assistant. So your profit margin goes higher because you need less employees. Okay. All right. So making money on your money. Now, when I normally talk to you about, I talk to you about purchasing 300, 500 shares, maybe even a thousand shares. So if Apple is trading at, let's say $150 and I purchase a thousand shares, that's $150,000 I have in that trade. What I love about covered calls is if I put the right strategy down, I know on that $150,000, I can pull in $2,000 in, let's say, two weeks by selling out of the money cover calls. That means if I sell a two-week cover call, the call expires and I still own the shares, I keep the $2,000, I can do it again. That's $4,000 return, cash return, on that $150,000 investment with zero employees. Do you get that? I apologize for going fast, but you know, since you can't talk to me right now, I'm just assuming you could play it all back and listen to it. Okay. So $4,000 a month on a $150,000 investment, if that continues every 10 months, I've made $40,000. And best of all, I can trade from anywhere in the world. I'm not bound to a geographic location. Are you with me so far? Okay, this is why the big money, banks, insurance companies, college endowments, all trade in the stock market, except when they buy shares, they buy 1 million, 5 million, 10 million shares and sell an out of the money cover call. Do you get that? So let's go really easy. If I buy a million shares and I get $2 per share for selling an out of the money call, I just got $2 million with the click of a button, perhaps on a Monday morning. If that's a two-week trade, that's $2 million that month. If I can duplicate that trade twice in a month, that's $4 million per month or $40 million every 10 months. That's making money on your money. Well, wait a minute, Tyrone. If it's that easy, everybody would be doing it. How come everyone isn't doing it? All right. Listen to me carefully. Everyone is doing it. Everybody who's already wealthy. See, it's hard for us sometimes to think in such volume, such as a million shares. Why? Because most people aren't in that world of wealth. So if the world that you're in is comprised of the people that you work with, and your good friends from college or high school or the people in your neighborhood, you're not taught to think in terms of a million shares of something and generating income. And one of the things that really astounds me still as the wealthy investor is how if you grow up in a particular class on a particular track with people who earn $50,000, most people never leave that track. Why? You stay in the same neighborhood with people who have the same interests, the same concerns, the same fears about money, and then that feels normal and natural to you. But if you live a progressive life, you may move to another neighborhood where everybody has a half a million dollar house, whole new set of fears, whole new set of ideas and perception as to what is real. But if you really strive and you get lucky, you may move into a multi-million dollar neighborhood. And what happens there? A whole nother set of perceptions, a whole nother set of ideals, a whole nother set of problems. Right. So there was a rap song that came out that said more money, more problems. I have not found that to be true. 
um, having started out in a poor neighborhood and now living in, you know, one of the most lush multi-million dollar neighborhoods. Uh, it's not necessarily more more money, more problems, but I have had more responsibility. That I see, because wealth is a responsibility. It's not a free ride. Okay. But what I'm trying to talk to you about is changing your consciousness so that you become a better stock market trading and investor by suddenly realizing that you are trading alongside of institutions, banks, college endowments, and the like. So when I'm planning a trade, very often I'm looking at the trading volume. And if you know how to do the research online for free, what institutions are in that stock, maybe with 1 million, 5 million, or 20 million shares. Now, try to keep an open mind here because this is where your education kind of creeps in. If I'm in a stock like Apple and there are routinely 20 million shares being bought or sold on a given day, what is that going to do to the stock price? All of that buying power and activity causes volatility. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. It causes the stock price to move because when you sell 2 million shares, that may cause the stock to drop very quickly, a dollar fifty or so. But if somebody comes in and then buys 10 million shares, four minutes later, that causes the stock price to rise. So if I am a volatility trader, I want to see institutions jumping in and out of that stock on a daily basis because maybe I'm trying to get out on a $1 move or a $2 move, a very quick sale, but I can't do it on my own. But I can do it if there's a lot of institutional money in the stock. You start to see that? Okay. So when I start showing people how to make a steady $1,000 a week, cover call writing and volatility trading, it's mind-blowing to the average person because they really don't understand how much money is really flowing in and out of a stock. Now, if I want to get good at volatility trading, I have to have some sense of who I'm trading alongside. I have to have a sense of the story of the stock, and I also need to look at the current trend of the stock. So this is why I like Apple stock so much, because for the past five to 10 years, it's had an incredible amount of volatility. The institutions that trade in and out, they're usually trading in and out for the long term. And if I'm there with a thousand shares, you know, they're there with 20 million shares. So therefore, volatility is going to be higher in a stock like Apple, which is in a consistent upward trend. Well, if I can find a stock like Apple that has another institution or several other institutions trading it heavily, I now have a system. Do you see how that works? So I would be making my money on my money. Why? Instead of just trading with greed, I have a system because of the big boys that keep that volatility high so that I can keep my profits high. Do you see how that goes? So would I ever start a pizza shop? Me personally, no. I love pizza. Actually, I'm lactose intolerant. I love it when I can have it, right? They're great sources of income, but it's hard to take one pizza shop and get rich off of it. But here's the advantage. You and I can pick one stock, one stock in the stock market that fits our criteria. And within a two to five year period, if we plan our profits out and we collect our dividends, we could have financial freedom. Do you see how it works? Everything from a financial point of view is making money on your money. And you get to choose the modality, whether it's having your own business, whether it's putting your money in a savings account. You do make money on your money in a savings account, but not as much as learning how to trade in the stock market. Back in a moment. Want to increase your stock market trading profits? Then you need to start your monthly membership to WITradeSchool.com right now. Don't understand how to write covered calls for monthly income? No problem. Simply review Tyrone's latest stock trades in our video library as many times as you need. WITradeSchool.com is all about helping you get the financial education you need to earn money in the stock market and change your financial life. Tyrone Jackson, the wealthy investor, has helped his students earn thousands of dollars per month trading stocks online from home. These are people just like you. 
So what are you waiting for? Follow Tyrone Jackson's Red Hot Stock Trades and Investment Strategies today. Don't wait. Start your monthly membership at WITradeschool.com right now. Hey, it's Tyrone Jackson, Wealthy Investor again, and I just wanted to remind you that if you enjoy listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast, be sure to share it with your friends all across social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you enjoy hearing about success principles that inspire you, as well as interviews with some of my most successful students, I want to remind you it's right here at the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast, wherever you get your podcast. And oh, make sure you download as much free material as you want at thewealthyinvestor.net. I'll see you there. Making money on your money. That's what this episode is all about. Okay, so we've talked about your consciousness, which we will constantly talk about uh, in all of the shows going forward. And I always ask you, do you have what it takes? Do you have a millionaire's mindset? What is a millionaire's mindset? Well, to be a millionaire, you have to start to think like a millionaire, which means one of the keys to being financially successful is not more income, but more residual income. So if you start doing things that create residual income in your life, that means that you won't always have to trade time for dollars. You won't always be bound to a geographic location or working for someone else. It's just a matter of planning and expectation. Now, what feeds your millionaire mindset is getting a clearer picture of reality. Now, welcome to the world of wealth. What would happen if you could trade a million shares in and out for a $1 uptick in the stock, a $2 uptick in the stock, and also cover call right at the same time. You would have two stock market streams of income, two stock market residual income trades that you could do and perform for the rest of your life. It's just a matter of what you believe to be true, right? So I have two daughters and I've taught them and talked to them about the stock market so much that they immediately accept that there's somebody out there making two, three, four million dollars a week volatility trading. Why? When they came in this world, they came in as a blank slate, right? They didn't know anything. You only know what your parents teach you. So if I say to them from an early age, you guys are going to be stock market millionaires once you put your mind to it and you are going to love it. And I throw in this, you're going to help a lot of people giving some of that money away since it's coming so easily to you. What are their expectations, right? So they expect to work a little while in their life, mostly in their 20s, but by their 30s, they should be financially free. So what am I exposing you to? A way of thinking, a way of expecting that great things are going to happen to you financially. So again, you won't get stuck trading time for dollars for the rest of your life unless you like your work that much. And there are people who really do. So learning what the institutions are doing on Wall Street is part of your expanding consciousness so that you can begin to create this residual stream for you. Now, what will happen is when people say, hey, what'd you do today? And you say, oh, I listened to Tyrone Jackson's Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. And he was talking about how institutions trade for millions and millions of dollars a week. Is that person that you're talking to going to immediately be excited and jumping for joy for you? Not unless they have a financial education, not unless they've learned to expect residual income. Why? Because birds of a feather stick together. Middle class birds of a feather stick together and wealthy birds of a feather stick together and broke birds of a feather do what? Right. So if you're looking around your world and you're trying to figure out where you fit in and where you want to be, it has something to do with you. Maybe you're just thinking too small. OK, now, apparently you guys love this episode I did on what's going on with Disney stock. So you do like it when I take a particular stock story and I break it down and I explain to you what's going on at Disney. Now, I cover that in the last episode. Be sure to listen to it. It's really eye opening. Right. OK, so let's talk about what's going on right now in the stock market. There are institutional corporate raiders or they call them activists 
who go in and buy up such volume of such companies that they can actually call in over the phone and meet with the board of directors or the CEO. So Carl Icahn, if you Google him, he's one of the most famous activist investor. When he sees something that he doesn't like going on at a company, he can go and buy one, two, three, four, five percent of a company's shares in the open market. He becomes a very big shareholder. What happens? The CEO and the board have to listen to him. But some people know that when Carl Icahn starts to make noise about a company, it's a good time to buy the shares because he supposedly represents the shareholders and that drives the price up. So, you know, I don't recommend that you necessarily make a career out of following activist investors, but they do cause change at a company. And I have to say, when they start to fussing and noise making, the stock price does go up. And we just saw that in Disney shares uh, with Nelson Pelps. He had done the same thing. They worked out a resolution. The shares are higher. But he's uh, the watchful eye representing a shareholders like you and I. Now, activist shareholders know that they have the power to drive up stock prices. And if after they've made their noise and been heard by the board, they may have 10, 15, 20, maybe even 50 million shares in that company, especially if the float is like a billion shares, right? So 50 million shares is not a lot. Okay. But most individuals don't own a large stake like that. How do they exit their trades? And this I have been uh, teaching a lot in my classes lately. Instead of selling a 30-day or 60-day cover call or just selling their shares at a profit, get this, this is a little advanced, they will go out a year and a half and sell an out-of-the-money leaps call option, make millions of dollars off that call option, essentially getting a portion of their money back in their account in T plus one, and they will still own the shares. So they win no matter how you look at it. And by the way, selling leaps cover calls on a portion of your trading account is guaranteed money because if the stock rises, you give up the shares. If it doesn't, before expiration, there's a high probability you will buy those calls back, roll out. You hear me talk about buy back and roll out, and you will keep the party going. So it's a great way to make long-term money while still placing your shorter trades. You see, making money on your money is not difficult. You just have to open your consciousness and get that financial education. So here's my question to you. Do you really want to be in a different place financially one year from now? Just one year. You know how fast one year goes? Where do you want to be next year this time? And I submit to you, you want to be in the stock market, in Dow stocks, with those institutions, trading, making money on your money. And I'm willing to bet, You don't really want a pizza shop. Am I right? Okay. So following institutions in the market, really, really important. Staying with stocks, trading stocks, and even investing stocks, and even investing in stocks with high institutional involvement, great way to go because those companies can survive the ups and the downs of the stock market and do well over the long term. Think differently. You'll feel things differently. In your external world has to follow your thoughts, interpretations of what reality is, and that's how you change your life financially. See you next week right here on Trading Stocks Made Easy. You've been listening to the Trading Stocks Made Easy podcast. Be sure to rate and review our show on iTunes. While you're on iTunes, be sure to click the subscribe button and you'll automatically receive our next episode. 